So welcome. There are a lot of guys here. Can you hear me? At the back. Okay, I will speak louder. And so welcome to my topic. Okay, thanks. So today I will talk about something about the U-turn and uh, something about the code in the U-turn. And my name is Yongsheng Gong and uh, I'm working for United States. And, uh, and uh, if someone want, want to, want, wants that slide here, you can, uh, I have uploaded to my slide to the speaker's site. So I hope, he, I hope the slide will be, will be there with the videos. And if not, we, uh, you can find my name on the Neutron Project site. So send me the email to ask for the PowerPoint. Thanks. <coughs> so this presentation is deep dive into the Neutron. So I'm talking about the coding. So there, there will be many codes and some UML diagrams. And uh, I cannot guarantee the, 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 uh, the correctness of, of, uh, of, of some contents because the Neutron's project is making a uh, make fast progress every time. Okay, mm, in this session, I'm very excited because our Neutron develop, uh, community developers are very active to promote the Neutron project. And I have scanned the sessions list and I found some, uh, this is just a part of, of this list. So I think these sessions are very informational and very helpful if, if we want to learn more detail about the nutrients and uh, the components of it. But uh, my, today's uh, my, my today's presentation is, uh, is, very, uh, is just the beginning, I think. Okay, uh, today I will talk about um, the, how the neutron server gets started from, uh, from the coding, from the developer side uh, view, point of view. And, and then I will talk about how a, an API request is processed. Oh, then, uh, I will look at the current default plugin, ML2. And uh, then, uh, you, as, you, as we know, the neutron is consists of many agents. So to learn deeply that the neutron, we should, should know how the agent communicates just through the message queue. So the message queues in neutron. And then the normal compute, how, how the normal compute interacts with the neutron server, and asked. To, to develop a neutron, we should know how to debug the neutron server. Okay, this is today's contents. Okay, um, if we want to know the neutron server, there are some very related skills. First one is WSGI. WSGI is a variable server gateway interface. It specifies how a variable server interacts with um, web applications. Now, currently, you, if you type in the neutron server on, uh, on a console, then it will start it, uh, neutron server applications on the uh, embedded web server. But I have also heard that there are some guys are running neutron server on the Apache server. Okay, the next uh, skill is to pass the deploy. Pass deploy, deployment is a sequence to configure the WSGI applications and the servers. And uh, we will look at the past, deploy, uh, past deployment configuration of the neutron. And uh, the third one is the Python rules. Python rules is very, is very critical here. We use it to form the neutron server's API layer. We, we will look at it also. And then the pink and the pecan. There are some OpenStack projects are using pecan, but uh, uh, we also have uh, the, the neutron uh, community developers also think we need to do some change. 
And we have a design summit sessions there. If you want to know the decisions, you can, well, we can see the, see the easy path of that session. So, okay, it's the layer diagrams. At the top, it is a, uh, it is a neutral service diagram, layer diagram. At the top, it is API. The API consists of core REST API and extension, extension REST API. And uh, under it is the common service layer. The common service layer will do authentication and authorization and input validation and to, to form the output. And uh, after this the common service layer, it is the plugin interface, and, and then it is the plugins themselves. The plugins themselves will communicate to agents. So we will look at, uh, we will go deep dive into the code to see how these nails are formed, okay? Okay, we have talked about the paste application, uh, paste deployment. This is the Neutron's paste deployment configuration file. At, at the top, you can see the Neutron. Neutron is, Neutron, Neutron is coded into the, into, the, into the code. This is the Neutron service application name. Under it, there is the URL prefix v, v2.0. It is the, it is the Neutron, uh, Neutron's we, uh, version, version two APIs prefix. And then you can see that the neutron API V2.0 consists of four components of the paste components. This is very important if we will talk about some of them. Okay, look at, uh, if we want to provide the, provide the neutron service code, we must just to find the main functions. Main functions is the engine point. Okay, if, if, if we want to net track, net, net track the calls from it. The main, the main endpoint to, uh, to do two important steps, that one is to, to pass the configuration files so, uh, so, so it knows that how the how that system is configured. And then the paste deployment function is, no, uh, is used to know that the to know that there's four components. You can see that there are, we have four components and we also have four factory method here. So this four method view know that, it, know that this four components is back, is back to you. And after these four components uh, are loaded, we will have a pipeline, pipeline to, require, to deal with the API request. Okay, let's look at how the pipeline is used. First, API is issued from the client. There will, be, there will be one URL request. The URL request will come to the first component, OSINT token. OSINT token, uh, OSIN token is used to do authentications. So there are some, some other projects are using Neutron without the, without the keystone. So, uh, in that case, we, uh, the OSIN token can be removed. And the next one is the Keystone Context. The Keystone Context, uh, Keystone context just uh, convert the OSIN token's information, uh, OSIN token return information into the Neutron Context. The Neutron Context is used, uh, is used by the following two components. When the request is in encrypted with the neutron context, it will come to the extensions component. Extensions component will, uh, will deal with the extension, extension resources uh, uh, API. If it is not the extension uh, API, it will go to our core service, core REST API. If in the core REST API is, is not found, uh, the HTTP is not found, it will be returned to the user. That is, uh, this is the request pipeline. We will look at, uh, uh, and, and uh, in, the net, in the following uh, time, in the, in the following part, we will, we will talk about how the process is, how the process, uh, what the process do. Okay, let's look at how the system get, get, 
get started. In this slide, we, uh, um, we can see two, two important steps. Steps A, to create the core plugin instance. Step D, to load the service plugins. There are two configuration items in uh, Neutron.com. One is core plugin and the other is service plugins. In one Neutron deployment, we sh we there is only there is one and only one um, core plugin configured. But the service uh, plugins, you, uh, we can we can we can have many, such as firewall service and the load balance service and the L3 rotor services. So, so this line, uh, until, until here, the plugins are loaded. And uh, what are plugins and extensions? Extensions are about resources and then the actions on them. So uh, you can see that is, uh, each extension will, will define one function, get resources. This function will return the resources and the actions on them. And the plugins are used to support the resources. You can see that uh, in, in each plugin class, we will have a supported extension, alliance, member, attributions uh, defined. It will define what extensions are uh, supported by this plugin. And uh, there, are some, there are also some functions defined in the plugin class. These functions are resource, resources action handlers. So this, this is the, um, uh, about plugins and extensions. We, we have, uh, this, this new, Neutron server has loaded the plugins and then the extensions will be loaded. Extensions are managed by extension manager. The extension manager will search the extensions under some paths. The paths can be defined in a Neutron, in a Neutron.com by API extensions paths, configuration items. And uh, you can see that in step A, it will search under each path to find, to find some specified class name in, in, in each module. And uh, this is, will be the potential, uh, potential extension. And in step B, the neutral server will do two kinds of checks. They will check if a potential extension has imp implemented some, some needed function, interface functions. That, and, and, and the second section, it will check the, if one of the plugins is supported. So this is the, how the extensions are, are loaded. Okay, now it, it is the time to install the Core Resources API. The core resources, API, uh, the core resources are defined by rotor.py file. Currently, we have three kinds of co uh, core, resources, uh, uh, core resources. It is a network, subnet, and the port. Okay, after this step, the core, res the core resource, the core REST API will be constructed and exposed. And uh, it, now it is the time to assemble the extension resource, uh, REST API. The extension middleware class is used to expose the extension REST API. When, uh, when, the, when the extension middleware is created, uh, is, is instantiated, it will get all extension resources from the extension manager. The extension manager will return all of, all of the previous loaded extension resources to the extension middleware. Then the extension middleware it, uh, will install the Python root object into the, C, into the WSGI framework. So and, and, until, until this step, the all, all extension URL will be installed and exposed. So, we have, uh, let's move to the normal steps to how the neutron server process and 
API resources. Yeah, uh, we have seen that the core REST API, extension REST API, as uh, how, how this API are, are I suppose, and then, the, and then the plugins are loaded. So we will talk about how the API is processed. So you can see, we, we have a very, very important object resource. The resource is, you can see, you can picture it just as a hook in a WSGI application framework. So there, if there is a UI, a API UI coming to the resources, callable method will be called, and the resources will, in, will initialize, uh, deserialize according to the request the content type. For example, if it is the J JSON request, it will, it will uh, generate a JSON deserializer. If it is XML, XML deserializer will be created. And then that deserialize method is called to deserialize the request body. When the request body is, is, get, uh, is got, the, resource, the resources method will call a controller. A controller and the, uh, will return a uh, response and the resource will synthesize it according to it, and the, a, the API client will get the response. Let's, let's go, to, go into some detail uh, about the, how the controller to call the plugin. This is, this is the important part about the common service layer. So when an API is, is issued from, uh, uh, is, is, uh, is received by the controller, the controller will calculate the plugin's handle function according to the action, action text. Of that, the, the controller will, will do some authorization and do some uh, and to validate the input. And then the uh, uh, plugin's hand, handle function will be called. And of that, if it is about core resources API, it will send out the DHCP notification. And after that, on step one, four, five, the response will will be created and uh, and after that the client API client will get the response so let's go to uh, uh, talk about some ml2 plugin the ml2 plugin is uh, is currently the most popular and the default plugin in the neutron project it has deprecated to the Linux plugin API and uh, open vSwitch API and some so so it is very, it's, it's, so it is, uh, it is, should be, be the, very, uh, be the future's trend. The ML2 plugin just uh, can allow us to use, use different network, uh, network technology at the same time. For example, you can have some Linux, Linux bridge agents, uh, computer nodes, you can also have some Mm, have some open v switch agent computer node you can you can have some mm, Cisco's computer nodes or some 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 other vendor specific technology nodes it is, uh, in one neutron deployment so uh, now ml2 plugins uh, consists two important concepts network types and uh, mechanism drivers Let's look out the, uh, the setup.cfg file under the neutron project's top directory. We have defined, uh, you can see here some, 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 some type drivers and some mechanism drivers. And to start the neutron server with ML2 plugin, you must have some, you, you must define what type drivers and the mechanism drivers are used. So in the ML2.ini file, the type drivers and the mechanism drivers are very important and to, to be considered, considered salary. Okay, we continue to, we continue the, uh, we have talked about the neutrons, when neutron get, neutron server gets started, 
it will create a core plugin instance. This is about the, uh, how the ML2 plugin is created. ML2 plugin uh, will, in fact, there are, two, there are two important things to do. Um, uh, first is to in initialize the different type drivers and uh, mechanism drivers. These type drivers and mechanism drivers are divided, are, divided, are divided in the configuration file. And last, it will be set up RPC as a message queues. So that's 40, 49. That is message queue. Uh, let, let's come to the message queues in Neutron. ML2 plugin is, is, is the core plugin. The core plugin will consist of two very important objects to, to deal with the RPC messages. At about, uh, at, at the bottom, it is a not, notifier. A notify object is used to notify the L, 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 L2 agents some, some, mess, uh, some messages. And then the callbacks. The callbacks is used to receive, receive the RPC messages from, from various agents, such as, uh, such as open switch agents, L2, L2 NIST agent, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, include the DCP agent. Okay, um, this is the this is the RPC structure on the on uh, open B switch agent. You can see that uh, at, at the center is the o, OVS neutral agent. Is, it is it is the class that, that when we start the open B switch agent, uh, the open B switch agent will create one one object of OVS neutral agent. Always neutral agent has one member, one member attribute plugin RPC. The plugin RPC is used to to send the notification or get the uh, get information from 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 uh, uh, plugins. And the uh, OVS neutral agent class also defines some callback functions. The functions are used to receive the messages from the from plugins. So let's get more details. Here are, here are, message, uh, here are RPC messages from core plugin, uh, from the plugins to, to L, L2 agents. The output, the output is, is agent, uh, is ML2 plugin. We have said that ML2 plugin will have a notifier. So if there are some events that you need to send a notification to the L2 agent, one of the, one of the major, uh, major functions will be called. And uh, at, the, at the center, it is the, the exchanges. You can see that all, all of them are fan out exchanges. Also, there are queues, and uh, each queue is for each exchange. And we also, at, at the bottom, it is OVS neutral agent. You can, see, uh, you can see that there are some callback functions. I hope you, we can see the, we can see, we can see, we get some, for, for, for example, if we, if we if we if we delete a network, the core plug, uh, the plugin network, the the, the plugin we are called a notifiers notifiers network delete function, the network delete function will send the message through through here. Okay, thank God. How to go back? This one, okay. 
Okay, that will talk about network delete. A network delete function will send network to del delete messages. On this change, you'll come to here, and then the obvious neutral agents network delete callback function will be called. And, uh, and, and in this function, the agent will do whatever he wants to do. So let's go from another direction. Sometimes the, sometimes the agent, the agent need, need to pod, need to actively to, to communicate with the plugin. So, and uh, the exchange is used is Newton topic exchange, and then the Q is Q plugin. And, and then uh, the, the plugin has, a, has related callbacks functions defined. So for example, Example the get device get device get device detail. So some, some, sometimes the agent need to know something more about a port. So it will call the it will call the get device details message uh, functions. The get device detail function will send a message to the neutron cube uh, to the neutron topic change. And then the uh, ML2 plugin uh, callback function get device details will be called. And uh, on the plugin side, the get device details will to query the database for this port and then return some network information about the port and, uh, and then return to get return to the agent. So we have more obvious uh, structures. This is DHCP agent. You can see that uh, it has the same same pattern, same pattern uh, as the OVS L2 agent. At the bottom, it is a plugin RPC object that is used to to, to communicate with the plugin server, and uh, and uh, it also defines some 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 callback functions. That's used to receive the notification from the plugin. We can see, uh, here, here is the messages from Newton server to DHCP agent. Every API on core resources, such a uh, such network, uh, sub, subnet and the port to create and to then update, delete, or whatever, will send a message to, to DHCP agent. If these messages are Targeted to spe specific DHCP agent, the neutron top the, the, the exchange topic named neutron will be used, and uh, and to the message will be delivered to specify the DHCP agent. If the DHCP DHCP not, uh, messages are not are, are not to, 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 a, to a, spe a specific agent, the fan out is changed, will be used. Such a, and uh, this is the DHCP agent to, to call plugin. Sometimes DHCP agents also need to know more, know something from, from the plugin. I will not talk too much. I think it is a, we have just 11 minutes left. So let's look at how the neutron server interacts with, uh, with the normal compute. In NOVA's in configuration files, there are some neutron server, uh, neutron server specific configuration items defined. If, uh, at the top, it is the network API class. If it is not defined as such, the normal network, traditional normal network will be used. 
So once we want to use the use the neutron um, neutral network, we have more options to define. There are, uh, the the red the red colored options are used to connect to the neutron server. We have neutron URL region and and some some password and this server. And then the last is neighborhood VIF driver. Now VIF driver is also very important if you if we want to implement a a very vendor specific uh, specific uh, specific neutron drivers neutron plugins. Okay, this is a message flow when we put a virtual machines on 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 Nova. Somewhere in the in a core in in a core in a core stream, the Nova computers the build instance function will be called. In this function, the step one, allocate network will be created. This fun, uh, the allocate network will will to will to call the will call the neutron servers create a port REST API. But once the neutron server receives the, the API request, it, it will the, the core plugin will will create the port resources on the plugin side, and then the port information will be returned to the normal compute. And then on step three, the the uh, the VIFS drivers plug plug uh, function will be called. This function, one of the important uh, important tasks of this function is to add a port for the virtual machines to the to the open v switch bridge. And uh, our busy agent will detect the port is added, and uh, he and the agent need more information from neutron server. So on step seven, the get device detail RPC message will be issued to to the neutron server from RPC queue. After get the information about the port, on step eight, the agent the agent will set up the OVS port, and and at this time, the virtual machines network connectivity is assured. The last important uh, step is to uh, is uh, is for agent to notify the neutron server because the, uh, the the port is is up. So this is the step nine update device up device up messages sent. So here we here we are using previous talked about the RPC message and the REST API is called. Okay, it's time to know how to debug a neutron server. A neutron server's code is very big, so that know how to debug it is very helpful for our developers. And uh, we, uh, the, the neutron develop, uh, community developers Key, uh, maintain the wiki page. You can, you can have a look at it to know something about about it. And and uh, here I will show two ways to debug the neutron server. First is Eclipse py, uh, py dev. Because the py dev is not compatible with the event thread, so we must to change the event mounting patch function to use the Python standard thread. And then we create a Python debug and the run version in the Eclipse and the, of that we, okay. We start the neutron server in debug mode. Okay, this is a very, very exciting page I think when a developer see it. Okay, you can see that we can set breakpoint at anywhere, and also we can see the variables, uh, the values of variables when, it's, when, it's, when, the, when the server is paused, is hitting the breakpoint. 
you can even set uh, some conditional breakpoint. After that, you can step over, step into. This is very, very convenient. Another, I recommend is another way is, is to use IPDB. IPDB needs to, uh, to use IPDB, we need to add the following line to the neutron server. The, I think it, it is okay to, to add this line uh, into a, uh, anywhere, uh, anywhere in the, in the neutron server's code. And then you, you can start in the neutron server. This is the page. When, uh, when the neutron, uh, when the set, set trace, set trace line is hit it, IPDB console will be showed. You can use the, you can use the IPDB command, such as go to nest, stop, stop, and uh, set up breakpoint, pre, uh, print the local variables and uh, global variables. Okay, that is very, very exciting towards too. And the difference between IPDB and the PYDEV is that PYDEV cannot, uh, uh, to use the PYDEV, you must, to, you must to, to use the Python thread. And uh, they are, because the system is, uh, when the system is running, we should use the even eight thread, so, so there are some exchange behavior sometimes according to the thread behavior. And, uh, IPDB, but IPDB, uh, uh, to use IPDB, we are, uh, we are still using the event need thread, so it is, it is uh, more close to the production environment. But the PYDEV has a good, has a good uh, interface. Okay, that's, that's all for today. So, do you have any questions? So, um, my text uh, will be, up, uh, I think will be, will be show under the, under the video. And uh, if, I have also said if, if it is not, you can always find me on the Neutron project site. Okay, thanks.